Thank you, brethren. Good evening, church. I am not going to preach tonight. I know the hour has gotten by us, and uh, I just want to share a quick few thoughts with you. I hope you enjoyed a little glimpse of what the men's ministries are doing here at Grace Gospel Church. Amen. <laughs> know also that um, for the brethren that are married, uh, we could not do this without the mighty women of God that stand behind us. Denise Algeria uh, supports him. Lee Martell supports her husband. Joyce Owen supports me. Joyce has been called the magic behind the madness. Go figure. Let me just share a few thoughts. And I'm reading from 1 Kings, second chapter. At that time, King David's death approached. He gave this charge to his son, Solomon. I am going where everyone on the earth must someday go. Take courage and be a man. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. At the deathbed of King David, he's speaking to his son Solomon, who would take after him. And his dying words to Solomon was to be a man. Another way of saying that, and I use for my subject tonight, man up. This is what David was telling Solomon. Be a man. It's your time. Man up. The problem is there's a question about whether Solomon knew what that meant. David is a beloved character to many of us Bible readers. He's a, he loved to worship. He was a man after God's own heart. He was certainly someone to be emulated, and in so much that the Messiah would actually bear a title from him, the son of David. He was, uh, without a doubt, the greatest king of Israel aside from King Jesus. And oftentimes we like to put people on pedestals and we become guilty of hero worship. And David is often seen as one of those heroes. And when that happens, just like it happens in real life, you can become blinded to the fallacies and the failings of individuals. And David was that kind of man. As great as a man he was, he had many failings. And some of those failings, some of those great failings, had to do with David as being a man, David being a husband, and David being a father. And I just wanted to share some scriptures with you to illuminate that idea for you. Now, David was actually not alone in this failure and fallacy of, of manhood and fatherhood. In fact, the book of Samuels and the Kings, uh, you see many of the judges and the kings, there's actually a, a familiar theme throughout these books relative to the kinds of fathers that these men were the leaders of Israel. Let's start with Eli and Eli's sons. Now, Eli was one of the last judges of Israel, a prophet and a priest. And it says about him, now the sons of Eli were worthless men, and they did not know the Lord. And then a one time a prophet came to him and says, and then a man of God came to Eli and said to him, thus said the Lord, did I not indeed reveal myself to the house of your father when you were in Egypt and in bondage in Pharaoh's house? 
Why do you kick at my sacrifice, and my offerings, which I've commanded in my dwellings, and honor your sons above me? This warning went unheeded, and later on, the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing with Israel, at which both ears of everyone who hears will tingle. And in that day, I will carry out against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from the beginning to the end. For I have told him that I am about to judge his house forever for the iniquities which he knew because his sons brought a curse on themselves and he did not rebuke them. So we see that the pattern started with Eli and the kind of father that he was. It goes on. Eli raised Samuel. And Samuel likewise, it came about when Samuel was old, he appointed his sons judges over Israel. His sons, however, did not walk in his ways, but turned aside after dishonest gang and took bribes and perverted justice. This was the reason then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you have grown old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king to judge us like other nations. And so we see that we went to Saul and then David. And then we even get a glimpse to the kind of father that David must have had. We read about when David was anointed and he went to the house of Jesse. It says, Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are these all your children? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he is tending the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for I will not sit down until he comes here. Samuel went time to look for a king and was sent to Jesse's house. Jesse called all of his sons, but did not call David. And what that must have said to the kind of relationship that David had in his family. To be overlooked publicly by his father. You wonder if this was behind one of the Psalms that he wrote when David says, For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me up. So then we get to David and look at the kind of father that he was. It says, but One of his sons in the course of time, Ammon, the son of David, fell in love with Tamar, the beautiful sister of Absalom, the son of David. And Ammon became obsessed with his sister Tamar, and he made himself ill. She was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for him to do anything with her. And when King David heard all of this, he was furious. We read about this incestuous relationship between his children, and it states here that David was angry and he was furious but we never read about where David did anything about it he simply got angry well the story goes on and Absalom his other son rebelled against him because of this incident moreover Absalom would say oh that one would appoint me judge in the land that every man who had any suit or cause would come to me and I would give him justice and in this manner dealt with all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole away the hearts of the men of Israel. So we see Absalom, when he rebelled against David, basically went out to Israel and said, you know, if I were the king, you wouldn't be going through the stuff that you're going through now. You ever wonder anybody that you have folks, they know more about how to run a church than the pastor? They know everything that's going wrong in the church? They know how to preach better. They know what the church needs. They know what the pastor should be doing. You find people like that, you stay away from people like that who think they know more 
This is what Absalom was all about. We read on. Even after this rebellion, the king gave his commandment to Joab and Ashai and Etai, for my sake deal gently with young Absalom. And all the troops heard the king give an order to his commanders. Even then, when Absalom did this, David did not want to deal with it. He said, go easy on him. He's my son. Go gentle. Well, they didn't listen to him. They killed him anyway. But then it goes on. It says, and about that time, David's son, Adonia, whose mother was Hegai, began boasting, I will make myself king. And he provided himself with chariots and charioteers and recruited 50 men to run in front of him. And here we read, his father, King David, never disciplined him at any time, even by asking, why are you doing that? So we see a pattern with David and his sons. And now he's dying, and he says to Solomon, take courage and be a man. But did he ever teach Solomon what that means? How do you do that? That's a TV set. Those are antennas. How many people remember a time when television used to go off the air? Well, one of the old shows where the honeymoon is in Ralph Cranman, he had a peculiar way of looking at life. And in this clip, we're going to see um, what Ralph Cranman thought being a man was all about. Get something in your head, Alice. I'm the king here. Remember that. This house is my castle. I'm the king. Remember that. King, king, king. You are nothing. I'm peasant. This is my house. My castle, I'm the king. Now we laugh at that, but I wonder how many men are that far from that concept of what it means to be a man. So when he says, take courage and be a man, what do we think about being a man? Now there's a whole lot we could say about that and I'm not going to say it all here, but I just want to hit on a few ideas. One is we think when we think about a man, we think about leadership. But is that what being a man is about? Being a man does not necessarily mean you are a leader. I'm preaching hard now. It means you're supposed to be a leader. It means that is God's calling and expectation of you. But just by simple fact that you have male anatomy does not in itself qualify you to be a leader. Jesus talked about this. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. Okay, so being a man does not necessarily mean you are a leader. That is God's expectation for you. That means we have to pursue God and say, Lord, teach me how to be a leader. Lord, make me a leader of the family. Make me a leader. Display your power. Display your grace. Display your goodness through my life. Being a man means being responsible. Now, being responsible is different from responsibility. A lot of us want responsibility, but we're not responsible. Oh, hallelujah. Responsibility means you want the position. You want the title. To be responsible means being able to respond to anything that comes your way. Sometimes that response means letting somebody else do it. Just because you are the man doesn't mean you're the best one to handle the checkbook. For some of us, if the wives didn't handle the checkbook, our house would be up for foreclosure about now. Being a man doesn't mean you have to run everything. It means being responsible, being able to respond to the various tasks that come to you. I'm going to move on because time is moving. Being a man means striving to conform to the image of God. Now, when I thought about this, 
in the image of God. It reads in Genesis, so God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And then it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a help me for him. Now, this loneliness from Adam was actually the first thing that God said was not good. And when I read this, now remember, this is before sin entered the world. This is before the fall. And when I read this, and I read that God made something that wasn't good. And I said to the Lord, Lord, how did you miss this? I talked to him like that. I said, how did, how did you make something that was not perfect, that was not good? And then the Lord spoke back to me. He said, Rev. He calls me Rev. He said, I didn't miss anything. And then he starts to explain to me, see, I made man in my image. I made him like me. I gave him qualities that I have. And I don't need anybody else. I don't need someone to lean on. I don't need someone to bounce my ideas off of. I don't need someone to encourage me. I don't need anybody at all because I'm God all by myself. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the first and the last. The rose of Shannon, the bright morning star. I said I wasn't going to preach. All right. So he actually made him too good. He made him too much like man. And so he realized at that point that he needed something else. It goes on to say, that the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs. It's interesting to note that God didn't have to go outside into another thing to create a woman for him. And because he was made in the image of God, everything he needed is in him. All it takes is God for you to pull it out. If you have God in your life, you have everything that you need, for success. You just have to have the Lord bring it out of you. Now notice here that God put Adam to sleep. He put his flesh to sleep and then he gave him a wife. Brothers who are praying, Lord, send me a wife. That's not the prayer to pray. What you should pray is, Lord, put my flesh to sleep and then you give me a wife. You see, as long as my flesh is up, then I'm too much in the way. I'm looking at the wrong things. So God had to put his flesh to sleep, and God gave him a wife. Amen. It's time to man up. Church, we need your support for the men's ministry. Sisters, we need you to pray for us that we would be the men that God is calling us to be. Don't be so quick to criticize us when we mess up. Please Pray for us. Amen.